coolest aircraft on the flight line, and I said with the oldest, slowest, actual coolest aircraft on the flight line, the HH-1 November Rescue Pig. Now you're talking, <laughs> we go from something that cost millions of bucks to something that has been around long enough that, uh, well, it's irreplaceable and priceless, actually, so. <laughs> but it still has a mission, and there is nothing better than a helicopter with this kind of mission. Absolutely, and so let me just talk you through what's going on here. So the scenario that we're, we've got here is there's a survivor out on the runway. He ejected out of, God forbid, ejected out of one of those new fancy F-35s, and he's landing on the runway. Now, normally, we just land and pick him up. But that's a little boring, so we're going to give you guys a show today, and we're going to do what's called a short haul. So you see, he used the smoke that was in his vest, and he signaled the aircraft. Here I am. They see the green smoke. You all saw the big circle that he did? That's one, to get the crew's eyes on the survivor. Two, to let the survivor know, hey, we see you. We're coming back around. Well, what's next? So he's up there, the helicopter's up there, the survivor's down there, so big deal. You're gonna land and pick him up? Well, on the right side of the skids, you can just start to see a set of oh. feet. That's our corpsman. He's talking to the crew chief right now. Crew chief's checking his hookups. He's talking to the pilots, saying, hey, is everything set, stable? Can I send the corpsman? So right now, he should be saying, conducting final checks, permission to send the corpsman. And in just a few seconds, you'll see HM2 Seckler one of the finest corpsmen in the entire Marine Corps coming off the right side of the aircraft down to check out our survivor down there on the deck. The UH-1 Iroquois, built by Bell Aircraft, is exceptionally venerable in, it, in that it changed the way cavalry worked. It's air cavalry, and one of the things that it became known for was search and rescue and dust-off missions to protect a guy. Now, it looks like he just rappelled down. Yeah, that's absolutely right. So we have two options to get the corpsman in. You can either repel him in or use the hoist to, to uh, take him down. But the corpsman has full control if he repels in. So that's our preferred method of getting the corpsman down to the survivor. So what he's doing right now is he's doing, he's doing a quick assessment on the patient, trying to uh, determine if his injuries can be hoisted up right now or not. Uh, if he were badly injured, he'd probably be calling for a litter. And we've got a hand and arm signal for that. He's also up a, uh, a radio inside his helmet so he can talk to the crew directly. Ah. But we use primarily hand and arm signals because they never fail. So, yeah, radios can, the batteries can go down. And I guess unless the corpsman's arms fall off. But uh, <laughs> we hope that doesn't happen. No. <laughs> you just got to have a lot of AA batteries. It's easier to wave than change batteries. That's exactly. So, so he's down there. He's assessing the uh, the condition of the survivor. If he's too, uh, what's he going to do? How's he going to pick him up? So what he's doing right now is he's hooking up to his vest. We're simulating that he's wearing an air crew vest, just like the ones that the uh, normal air crew would wear anytime they're flying. And all of those have a hoisting capability built into them so that we can do exactly what we're doing right here. So they, And sometimes they call that a mad poo, a military aviator double pickup. Exactly right. You know, your knowledge of this stuff is just incredible, Rob. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, you know what? I've watched guys like you. Look at this now. They're, now, they're, obviously, they can't hoist him up because he's on a rappel, so they're going to stay down there, right? Right, and so you see HM2, he's signaling to the air crew, hey, I'm clear of terrain. Go ahead and pick me up at a little bit faster rate. So he's picking him up, and you'll see HM2 Seckler sticking his arms out to the left and right, maybe his legs. And what he's doing there is he's not just surfing for the crowd. He's actually steering himself and the patient because if he doesn't do that, the downwash from the aircraft will make them start to spin. And if that's uncontrolled, they can spin at such a rate that both the patient and the corpsman will pass out from the centrifugal force. So obviously, that's a pretty dangerous situation. It could be exceptionally dangerous. But now there was also the, the crew chief aboard the helicopter. He's got an exceptionally important job because the pilots really, you're a pilot. You can't see straight down, can you? You can actually see they just lowered the hoist to him. You can see it coming down the belay line oh. there. So what they have now is they're going to have three types of hookup to the corpsman. And this, uh, they're gonna probably hoist him up a little bit, but also it just makes it safer. So he's hooked up by a rappel line, a belay line, and a hoist line. And that hoist has about a 600 pound capability to hoist up. Easy for two guys. Now, as they go back there, and and you've, you've been under this thing, right? Have you done this? I have, yeah. I, I prefer to be in the right seat, but uh, every once in a while I get underneath too. And. And it's exhilarating. I guess other than a skydiver, the view is probably better than any other kind of view you could have. 
Well, you get some pretty good wins under there, and uh, you just have to kind of trust the guys up top. That's the part that I don't like. I trust myself more so. I, I shouldn't say that. I trust all those guys <laughs> great. But for the first few seconds when you're under there, it's a little disconcerting saying, you know, I'm, I'm just along for the ride. But as a pilot, you really can't see straight down. So can't the see crew him at chief, all. how does the crew chief, how do you communicate and get in the right position to do a proper liftoff so you don't get a swing or something like that? Well, so all the pilots here have done at least one tour in the fleet. They come out here, and uh, it's a completely different type of flying, but they're all experienced pilots, and we run them through a nice long syllabus that uh, all they're doing is listening to the corpsman, very exacting movements. As much as one or two feet off could send that corpsman into a dangerous swing into terrain or into a cactus uh, or, you know, get the, get the litter in an uh, unsurvivable situation. Well, I sure appreciate it, uh, uh, A-Bomb. I hope you'll stick around a little bit uh, as we uh, continue on. But ladies and gentlemen, join me in a round of applause for the crew of the Umasar Helicopter.